Watching this on the Buns channel and you're wondering who the hell this dude is, I am Nick Hill. Hi, nice to meet you. Bun is having some minor tef technical difficulties and uh, he'll be on here momentarily. You know, sometimes those Canadians and their technology. So anyway, I hope you guys are doing well. Can you hear me and see me and see me and hear me? Yo. Yo, yo, yo. Yo, yo, yo. Yo, yo, yo. Where'd you guys go? Right on, dude. Thank you. Yeah, that one was a uh, a little uh, a little personal, but you know, it's good. I think it's probably good to talk about that stuff, right? Yeah, I cannot see myself. I can't see you either. Just so you know, I went live because I didn't want everybody to wait. Yeah, you should go live. Uh, start recording. Stop virtual camera. I don't know what's going on here. Stop. Just select your camera inside of Restream. Skip. Will. Turn OBS will, off. Forget it. Okay. Uh, yes. There we go. And. What do I. I select the gear. Bam. Uh. So I selected it and nothing is happening. Oh. Awesome. Um, hmm. That doesn't make any sense. Oh, right. The, Do I need the, to go live? You must. I just was just going to say that. I don't know why, but. Oh, yeah. I think that's what's going on the whole time. No, that's impossible. Yeah. It shouldn't have anything to do with your camera. No, I think this is what we had to do last time. <laughs> well, anyhow, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to try that. And, uh, this is great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, great. We were bound to run into some technical technical difficulties at some point. They I, they'll understand. It's I okay. knew that it was going to happen at some point. So, what if you were to let's we're going to live stream some technical support. So, sir, can you unplug your USB camera and then plug it back in for me? Yes. Here we go. Uh, and then uh, start virtual camera, and. Oh, you're still trying that, huh? Well, I'm going back to that because then I, because that's where my stream to YouTube is. Live I, streaming, go live, connect no, streaming bun. software. To you go don't live. need to go live from OBS. You need to go live from YouTube. I I don't know what it's trying to push if you're if you're doing it from OBS. Okay, so stream settings have moved. Frig, man. This is so frustrating. Don't get frustrated. We're going to figure this out <laughs> together. This is this is a perfect example of, you know, trying to do everything on our own. Sometimes things trip up, guys. And uh, this is what happens. We were all set up. Bun, and... got, Bun got his new, his new system in place. 
No, I'm on. I'm still on the old system. Oh, okay. Well, I can't even blame that then. Yeah, I didn't want to uh, f with that. Um, <laughs> well, maybe you should have. <laughs> I'm just doing the exact same thing. I didn't change anything since we. Uh, okay, so what I'm tell what I'm saying is I am pushing everything to your YouTube. Supposedly, I don't know why it's not going to your stream. But what I would do. If you, I mean, unless yeah, you want to wait until Well, this is the problem. When I do that, I, right now, I can't go live because it says connect streaming software to go live. Oh, and so. I'm not, yeah. I haven't done anything different. <laughs> well, uh, I'm going to maybe. It's live uh, online. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to try one more thing here and uh, bear with me. Yeah. Dylan makes a good point. Your frustration. Oh, he's not. He's gone. Yeah. Bun's frustration sounds like me trying to be polite. <laughs> yeah. So first of all, guys, sorry that there's issues, of course. Uh, we wanted to send it to both channels because Bun has his group of dudes i have my group of dudes and you know just trying to include more people into the into the conversation and uh i'm not sh we we had everything working everything was working fine we did a, a test stream and uh now it's not so that's cool um pretty annoying Uh, yeah, we got a, a good topic for you this evening. <laughs> Whenever Bun gets his S together. How are you guys doing? How's everyone doing tonight? How do I sound? I have a different microphone set up. I've been experimenting with different microphones, and obviously I'm back downstairs tonight. <laughs> oh, hello, California. Awesome. It's um it's 18 degrees here. So that's fun. And uh we got a pretty significant amount of snow. <laughs> well, I'm glad that on the worst day of your life, Dylan. You found time to come to this live stream. This broken live stream. <laughs> yeah, we got a buttload of snow yesterday. And, like, I don't understand why. I have cable internet. But our old neighborhood seems like anytime there's a significant amount of snow, the cable goes out around here. So, oh, 65, yeah, got the heater on, that's cute. It's always fun when, you know, I talk about how cold it is here, and then everybody reminds me how warm it is where they are. I guess I sort of asked for it, right, by saying it's 18 degrees here. It's only fair that you share the temperature where you are, so... Oh boy. You can you can take that 5 degrees. I I I'm not sure whether I prefer the freezing cold or the little bit warmer but you get snow. So um I don't know. Yeah, 32. When you have a few days of like in the teens and then you're in the 30s, it's it feels like spring and summertime. 
So, 55. Nice. Wait, it's 65 where Steve is. Dylan, it's 55 where you are. You guys live in the same state, probably 20, less than 20 miles away. It can't be that huge of a swing. Ah, uh, yeah. You get those, uh, that, that beach, that beach effect, snow. Repping the LBC. All right, okay, all right. Uh, again, apologies, everybody. We're starting a little bit late because Bun is, uh, having a little bit of technical difficulties. But we'll get this up and running sooner than later. I'm just gonna... Oh, sure. Hey, why did it go there? Oh, well, I guess I could have done it there. That's funny. It did, it was warmer today. It did warm up for a bit, but it's 18 now. It's, I'm like, come on, let's go. Get over this. 17. Oh, snap. Hey, man, I remember growing up in Anaheim, and we didn't have a heater either. Not that that meant much. We didn't have a heater or air conditioning. It's whatever, dude. Absolutely, man. I'm glad I was able to help. Yeah, that video that... Not that this doesn't have to do with being a... This doesn't have anything to do with the, the topic of the video, but that stock cab video seems to be doing pretty well. And I honestly didn't think it was going to. I don't know why. I just... Um... Yeah, I grew up... I was born in San Diego. Grew up in Anaheim. Left in, uh, 98. I've been stuck in this cold ever since. <clears throat> the funny thing is, Bun's probably trashing his room right now. His Canadian rage is just behind closed doors. Um, Tim, what's up, brother? We're just waiting for the bun. He's having some technical difficulties, so apologies for the actual show not starting. We are going to kind of dive in about, you know, something we've touched upon the last few episodes, and that's basically like being a small major tech difficulties. <laughs> oh, man. He'll figure it out. Give him a few minutes. Yeah, he's definitely body checking something right now. Canadian insert 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 Canadian joke here. Yeah, I mean, let's face it, it's been kind of a bit of a miracle that we've been able to pull off this many shows, and then his live stream has been going flawlessly, and mine has been working well. If for this to be the first time we've run into some issues, like, I'll take it. Of course I'll take it, because I'm sitting here with everything working, but, I mean, I'm not, I'm not mad. It was about, it was, it was a matter of time. Yeah, we're just gonna hang out a little bit, hopefully, till he gets it all figured out. Meanwhile, if you guys got anything you want to talk about, questions or comments or maybe stuff you're struggling with, with this side of things. Oh, 
Well, yeah, maple syrup, hockey sticks. He's got that free health care, so, you know, if he cuts himself, he'll be fine. Is there that big of a delay in the... Somebody mentioned the delay. Hmm. Oh, so you guys see the comments and then it, it like takes... It seemingly takes us a second to respond to them. Okay. An X2N? I am an ignorant fool and I don't know what an X2N is. Oh, weird. I have, um... No, I have... I have, um... My, di my uh, Solar Baritone has Duncan... No, uh, Dem uh, Demarzio Titans. My mistake. Titans. And, um, I'm pretty much doing all my guitar tones inside the box, meaning inside of the Helix, not in the mix, in the box. And, uh, I use the Badunk a lot. I use the RevGen Purple. These are all amp models, obviously. And I prefer a cab with a, a T75 speaker, or a V30, or a combination of the two microphone I tend to gravitate towards is a uh, Royer 121 or a uh, a Royer 121 an AKG C414 obviously a 57 depending on the tone I'm going for and I will definitely blend a 57 with one of those because uh, I'm just one of those idiots that you know I, I'm not I'm not a 57 on its own kind of guy. Bun's going to be so sad and frustrated and embarrassed. <laughs> And I don't really want to dive into this topic without him because he has a lot of notes in our outline. Um, Turbo Plasma Chicken. What's up, brother? What's up? We're just hanging out. Um, show's running a little bit late. We're, Bun's having some technical difficulties, so I'm kind of giving him a little bit of space to figure it out. Um, I use, let me see if I were to, I haven't been using IRs very much at all lately. I've been using stock cabs inside of the Helix for several months now. 
Um, I kind of found myself just wasting time going through all of my impulses. And, you know, I wanted to, I was getting requests for preset packs and stuff like that. And the logistics of putting out preset packs with an IR that I could include in it, like, I'd have to shoot my own IRs. And I don't have that capability currently. I've tried in my space and I have too many res uh, resonant frequencies down in my basement to, to shoot a good quality IR. So I dove headfirst into stock cabs and I've been loving stock cabs. And that's what I've been using primarily in the Helix for several months now. Um, and I basically kind of bounce between using a T75 speaker. So the, the, the cab block I'll use is a 4x12 Uber T75. So that is a Uber Shaw 4x12. Um, or I will use the 4x12 XXL V30, which I believe is an angle 4x12 with V30s. Um, and the thing is with IRs, I just, I, I'll use a, I was using um, a traditional, an IR from Own Hammer based on the traditional Mesa 4x12 with 70 watt vintage 30 speakers with a Royer 121 microphone right up on the grill. That was one of my go-tos. Um, yeah, 4x12 Uber with T75s. And the 4x12 Zilla cab. Um, the 4x12 Zilla cab with V30s. And a, what microphone was that? The, the AKG 414. Those were my like three go-to ones. Yeah, so that's, I mean, that's kind of what the point of the video I just put out, Dylan, was I, I got, and, and let me preface this by saying, and this isn't meant to be a Helix show, but again, if you're just joining us, we're waiting for the bun. He's sorting out some technical difficulties, so I'm just kind of taking questions from the chat, um, so apologies. But something I did diving in with the Helix, I was impatient. I was impatient and expected to just plug it in and, oh wow, spectacular, but I, I gave up too quickly and bought a bunch of IRs and got closer to what I wanted quicker, but didn't, like, understand what I was even doing. So, what's up, Barry? So, for a long time, as many of you who have followed the channel and my tones and stuff, I used Ownhammer stuff. And I love Ownhammer IRs. I still do. I still have them all loaded up. I, I'm not, like, anti IR impulse response for for the layperson, um, but again, I was getting requests for like tones, and people didn't want to buy IRs. So there's this weird thing where people loved IRs, and then there's a huge swath of people that don't want to buy it or didn't want to buy any. So I made my preset packs all with stock cabs because Bun was saying, "Dude, I think if you just check them out, spend a little bit of time, understand what you can do." you will like them. And he was 100% right. I started experimenting with the stock cabs. I started blending cabs and microphones, um, doing some EQ stuff. And I've created some of the best tones that I think I've ever, I've ever had with the stock cabs. And Dylan made a good point saying that I think maybe people think there's a huge difference. And I don't know that they're that far off. Um, there's a couple things happening with IRs. I think they're louder. So inherently... If something is louder, if something is louder, we think it sounds better. That's just human thing. That's just our ears. That's just how it is. That That's why the whole loudness war started when it came to streaming music and, and shit like that. Um, and one thing I noticed is, like, I was playing around with a neural DSP plugin, 
and it seems like their IRs have a lot of high end in them. And I, if I'm not mistaken, the neural stuff comes with ML Sound Labs IRs or IRs that are shot by Nolly, depending on which one it is. They seem to have a lot of high end information that you'll normally roll off in a mix anyway. And I'm just doing that in my patch. As I was trying to kind of duplicate the sound of the Gojira plugin, and I'm like, man, there is so much high end coming out of this plugin. So, uh, only thing I would say is that it can sound a bit less detailed and natural. Yeah, it's yeah, I just think. I just think, and it's kind of part and parcel to, like, our our kind of society right now as a whole. Like, we want to just plug it in, and it'd be brrr, instantly good tone. Yes, I don't have to do anything. And I, I appreciate that. I respect that. Like I said in my video, I get wanting to just plug in and play and have the thing get out of your way. And I think that's what Neural DSP is good at when it, when, when it comes to making their plugins, is... You can just load up a plugin more often than not. It's going to just sound really good right when you load it on your track. And, you know, that's not always the case with an Axe FX or a Helix. And you have to work at it a little bit. Um, so, you know, I kind of did a whole video on... I kind of poo-pooed stock cabs and then did the IR thing for a long time. And then I went back and explored the stock cabs and realized, wow, these are pretty good. So what I was kind of perpetuating this whole, you know, just screw the stock cabs, man. Go out and buy more stuff. And again, I love my own hammer IRs. I love the guys that own hammer. Um, it's, not, it's nothing against them or IRs or anything. It's just... Everything we do, everything you need is inside of some of these boxes. The Helix and the Axe FX or Neural DSP stuff, you know what I mean? Mike, what's up, brother? We're kind of just waiting for Bun. He's having some technical issues, so I'm just shooting the shit with the, with the chat, answering some questions, talking about stuff. Um, and we'll stop. Uh, so... Weathered and wise, um, and with swa swapping IRs, you are sort of doing what you can do with tuning the stock ones. IRs have some EQ done most of the time. Yeah, so that's a very good point too. IRs are shot colored. They're the the. It's not a pure. Maybe that's what we're hearing. You know, it's not a pure impulse. It's it's shot through. A, uh, an effects chain or not an effects chain like you know through a preamp and, and stuff like this <laughs> we're bunless currently yeah and I haven't got any text messages so he must be pulling his hair out right now I feel bad that he's having issues because I know how like I know how you know he doesn't want to disappoint anybody so I would just, at this point, rather than at least jump on and do the audio. I'll throw a picture up of him. I'll message that to him. Yo, just jump on with audio if you want. Question mark. Um... I guess I'm the meat in this sandwich. Keep the bun jokes coming. Bunless. That should be my own. <laughs> my own. Show. Bunless with Nick Hill. We'll talk about all the thing bun. We'll talk about all the things bun talks about, but without him being able to contribute. Yeah, you know, 
Turbo, I'm with you, and I kind of use those buzzwords too. But I find, I'm finding the stock cab stuff seems to just, just fit in a mix better. I don't know. Yo. Hello. Oh, I guess I should put headphones on. You don't have to. There we go. So I something is up where I cannot get a video stream out at all on the raw camera or on OBS or anything. And I haven't streamed since the last time you and I streamed. Weird. It doesn't make sense. Anyway, I well, apologize, everyone. Is it is it happening? Is it on? Is it is everything going? It's on. We're good. Every, we're is just it streaming hanging out. to my my channel? Is it not streaming? It's to it's, it's not streaming. Um, try try to like go into YouTube Studio and just go live. See if it'll let you. I don't know why it's not. No, that's the thing. It says connect streaming software to go live, and I can't. And then I also can't change it to just a camera. Well, that's dumb. <sighs> we tested all this. It was supposed to have been working. And it worked great. Uh, I don't know what we did wrong, but we'll try it again. Uh, what? Uh, I'm going to. So apologies, everyone. <laughs> no, everybody's cool. Everybody's understanding. YouTube. Uh, Nick Hill, I'm going to give them your stream in my thing here um uh, and oh i need to turn myself up a bit okay how do i do that i don't know this is a copy testing 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 and testing yo uh, hello. hello hello can you hear me though i like in the regular stream yeah i can hear you just fine uh it's not working uh but we are up on Nick's stream. Nick's apostrophe s yes, stream. Proximity, proximity. Be, Why is this uh, spinning? Come on. Now this is being only. stubborn. Anyway. Hello, hello, audio hello. Hello. Only. I wonder if there I can just put up a picture of you. Ah, don't worry about it. We can still have a conversation. So it actually makes it easier for me. I can hear you in your, I can hear me coming through your open back headphones. Oh, I'm sorry. It's all good. I won't, I'll talk less loud. Okay. So have we, have you got into any part of it or are you just been having? A no, chat? we've okay. been uh, just having a chat. Just having a chat. I'm, uh, I'm going to drink a beer. <laughs> I'm so fucking, oh, I just cursed. I'm so. Oh, that's all right. Guys, so we we frazzled. will we will yeah. I told them you would be. We will figure this out, guys. Um, people were very excited that we were going to send to both. So yeah. we'll figure this out. Apologies, we got real cocky. We did a test stream, um, and, it, and it was great. And it was fine. It was working. And 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 now, <laughs> no, it isn't. And now it's not. So. Yeah. Our, so, our most sincere apologies so we can dive in to the topics because I didn't want to start this without you, you know? It's, yeah. Oh, <laughs> the topic is still very relevant and uh, talking about it is going to be fun. So let's get into it. This is Bandless. It's a weekly live podcast for solo music creatives. My name is The Bun and uh, of course, you know, the handsome Nick Hill. Uh, what is this show? Every Wednesday, we being... Nick Hill and Mr. Bun dig into the cornucopia of challenges that solo music creators face. The series attempts to shine light on the tools, tactics, and perspectives that today, might help us. Yeah. Today. That might help us uh, put another yeah. foot forward. Yeah. Uh, um, <laughs> take it away, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have visual cues anymore. Yeah, yeah. Thinking about being a small artist, question mark? How about being an artist and an entrepreneur, boys? Because let's face it, 
if you kind of step back and think about what it is we're doing here, it's you're trying to, you know, it's a buzzword. I hate to use it, but you're kind of a brand. You're a brand. You're a thing that you want people to be consuming. So yeah, and, we're going to dive into this. And if the brand part makes you uh, leery, there are no rules to being a brand, to being a product, to being a service, to being a business. You can do it any way you want. You can do it as artistic as you want, as corporate as you want, but don't let that part scare you. Right. Um, and, and yeah, Nick, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm going to get into this first topic and I'm going to see how, how you feel about it. How do you feel about that? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. So the very first thing on this, I am small. I am big. Uh, this is something that I run into a lot, that Nick runs into a lot, that I have felt very much myself mm -hmm. uh, for a very long time. And I wish I would have had an alternate perspective on it. Uh, but I am small. I am big. We go to shows and uh, we hear people say, oh, they only brought out five people and it was, you know, maybe it was their first show or maybe it was their fifth show or 10th show, but maybe they're at the beginning and they only brought out five people. Right. Well, they brought out five people. And if someone who has never done anything before can bring out more, uh, that's a pretty major achievement. Bringing out anybody, connecting with anybody who you don't know, especially is a special thing. So I am a small artist. What is small? It is a comparative measurement. And I'm curious, Nick, uh, you know, I don't think this comparative thing is relevant to what we're doing. You know, like what, what does peripheries size and scale and success have to do with somebody who is just starting out? It has nothing to do with it at all. And I'm curious, I'm just using periphery as an example, but how, right. How have you wrestled with this idea of feeling small, feeling big? Have you wrestled with it? And if you did, how did you sort of come to terms with it? Or maybe you're still coming to terms with it. Yeah. Um, so this is interesting because I have done a healthy amount of comparison between what I want to wanted to be as a you know a musician mainly slash youtuber um because there are people and uh creatives that i watched and kind of wanted to get into this because of them so there was all, all automatically this built-in level of comparison that i really had to very very quickly stop like focusing on and I, I was for the most part i have been pretty lucky i haven't been caught up too much in comparing myself to bigger youtubers i'm trying to avoid saying being a youtuber because i am a youtuber but i don't kind of so so stupid and cliche i don't really look at myself that way um yeah which i think is healthy i think it's best to you know just do the thing and uh like do the thing do the best you can try and progress don't worry about being the thing just do the thing doing the thing is way better than being the thing I yeah think. no you're right and i think it's like so you need to have an idea of like at of something to aspire to you know so for me it was like keith when keith marrow when he was really big on youtube and then ola of course and you know rob chapman was kind of doing his thing with um Andertons and whatnot early early on they were just kind of starting to really yeah. be a presence and i just i loved what they were doing they were making music and doing what they loved and playing with gear and stuff and i was not so much into the gear but also a little bit so there was this initial like i'm comparing myself to them because i aspire and i kind of use them as like I don't know, like a, like a beacon, you know what I mean? And, yeah. and I, and I kind of also put it out of my head because you have to realize you're starting from the bottom, you know, you're starting from the bottom and, yeah. and it's going to, it's going to be a slow grow. 
we can't have you and, and I kind of started this YouTube theme thing at a very transformative time for YouTube because yeah. right before we started, it was a lot easier. I think maybe I don't know. I want to say easier because then it makes it sound like we're like, you know, struggling or whatever, but things were different. Things were the, different. That's yeah. Things were different. Um, and then it changed like right when I was about to get monetized, they changed it. Yeah. Same. <laughs> and I, I was monetized for a week and then I lost it for our, like another same. two months. That was exactly it. It took me way yeah. more than two months to get it back though. But here's, I, I always kind of look back and appreciate that because it really made me say like, all right, well, I need to get to this threshold to be monetized again. What do I need to do? Put out better content, put out more meaningful content, relate more to the people that I'm talking to behind the camera. So it kind of made, it pushed me in that way, you know? Yeah. Um, and, and so I, I think uh, there's a little important bit in there in that um, I don't think either of us were doing it for the monetization the monetization is just a, a sweet treat. There, there's all kinds of ways. If your interest is in generating revenue as an artist, as a performer, as a personality, whatever the case may be, mm -hmm. if your interest is that way, you don't have to rely on specifically the medium and Instagram or whatever. Other social medias are a great example of that, that have no built-in monetization. People right. just go for it and they make something out of it. Yeah. Um, and my interest in it personally wasn't similar to you, was never to be a YouTuber. I just really liked, I wanted to learn more about using cameras and what is this cinematic thing. And it was a great excuse to do that. But then I also found that this topic that I was into was, um, was meaningful to people. And I was actually more excited about talking about it than I had ever considered. I just never considered about really diving into it the way that yeah. I did. But I just wanted to kind of be clear. We're not in it. Uh, we're, we weren't in YouTube for the monetization specifically. It's just a nice kickback. It's the only social media that rewards the, the creator somewhat. It's not a lot of money, but it is something. Yeah. And it's nice, but I'm not, I'm not doing it for the monetization from YouTube and neither are you. I'm certain. Correct. Um, because you know, that's kind of futile at this point, or it's not, it's not, it's not a thing that I can rely on. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Which is yeah. fine. Like that's good. That's yeah. fine. But, um, so we kind of got off the rails a little bit there. A little, yeah. I apologize. But I think it's important in terms of this small, big thing. It's like, so you're an artist. You're doing something. You're putting yourself out there. Uh, music music artist, video artist, whatever. A combination of all the things, which is very common these days. Um, it's There are things that are, you know, that come with the option for pay. And you should always go for them because earning generating revenue is very important. But uh, I think if your sole purpose, your sole goal is just to make money, there's better ways to make money. Yes. So, you know, you going for it here and kind of getting that little carrot of monetization, it getting taken away from you. Uh, I think more than anything, would you say, that it was a little bit of a reminder. It's like, oh, like if you kind of, if you go for it, there's uh, some opportunity in it. It's not completely futile in terms of uh, being able to make something out of it more than just a hobby. Um, uh, yeah, that uh, like you have to be realistic and think like you can't go into it thinking immediately, at least at when we dove into it. At the yeah. time, I mean, you can, it wasn't like you could just dive into YouTube and blow up pretty quickly and make a significant living off of it. That went away. But 
there is let's not like we're not lying here bun and i both make money off of youtube it's not significant enough for me to live off of um i have far more responsibilities than bun does you know our our situations are a little bit different in that regard but bun is getting to a place where and and he couldn't do it with just youtube alone so that proves your point and it's gonna we're gonna dive into this a little bit more but it's like it it's part of a pie you know it's part of the pie and you'd be a fool not to think like, hey, you know, I like what I'm doing here. Um, people seem to be liking what I'm doing here. I'm, cr- we're, you know, we're creating this community. And also I can maybe make it a thing one day. It can be part of the thing. It's, yeah. it's sort of like if you look at it like a freelancer. And more often than not, if you're freelancing in a, in a particular uh, arena, you're not going to make a year's worth of money on one project, you know, it no. takes different projects. So what we're also going to dive into is basically like, yeah, like you can make money. You can make a living off of YouTube, off of merch sales, off of your music streams, off of, you know, uh, you know, brand deals. If you have those, like you have to put it all together. You use periphery as sort of like a, a, a gauge, you know, something a band you probably shouldn't compare yourself to but if you well, look at the way they did they're doing it as yeah. a band not as it, an, not as a comparison as an example it can be done yes yeah 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 i mean i w- yeah i think when you were using them as a comparison earlier it was like if you're just starting out don't say like well this is where i am look at what periphery is doing because that's yeah. not fair at the beginning but well, it's like not I, even what's fair. Uh, I think my big illustration there is what's very common when you're um, kind of near the beginning. We're not going to say small. We're going to say near the beginning of your, you know, it's a very good way of putting it. A, attempt to kind of make, you know, even if you're just in the exploration phase, you're like, I'm going to explore like what my opportunities are as a guitar player, as a producer, as a, whatever your thing is. I'm going to guess that most of the people here uh, can produce their own tracks, you know, finished tracks. I know cause I see Cosman is in the stream and I know that yep. he can produce his own tracks. I've heard some mm-hmm. recently and they're very mm-hmm. good Cosman. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, a lot of people are doing that. And so the comparison, the periphery comparison, what I'm really illustrating there is the like what, periphery is doing as you know in terms of career moves and how they do things is not relevant not very useful to the when you're near the beginning you need to do things that are more in line with being sort of a starting artist right and uh not a starving artist a starting artist yeah (laughs) okay i see what you're saying and uh, so it's important not to look at periphery and be like, oh, they do things this way. That's how I need to do them. They are doing these kinds of things. That's what I need to do. Actually, no, it's very misleading. Yeah, they're they're, they're, do- ex- they're doing those things. I was just going to jump in and, and yeah. agree with you. Like they're yeah. doing those things because of where they are at right now. Like there's exactly. different level. There's different levels to this. You know, you have really helped me kind of explore like different ways to make this a more viable thing. And it has everything to do with where we are at in, um, on this journey, on this trajectory, you know? Yep. Um, so when you could potentially get to the size of a band like this, you know? Yeah. There's the beautiful thing about being an artist in general. And, and this is a maybe food for thought for everybody no matter what you're doing, uh, if you're doing something that is creative and it could be creative within automotive, it could be creative within, I don't know, uh, you know, building houses or whatever. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Uh, But this applies to all creative things is creativity, uh, the business of creativity. If you can build a business around what you create, I know my pal uh, Thomas is in the stream. He's actually a good example of this. He does sort of a semi-creative 
thing. Like he paints houses and he does house renovation type stuff. Um, and there is a creative element to what he does. And just like being a musician or whatever, um, people eventually hire you because of how you do what you do and who you are. Right. Just like people, you know, might buy your download and buy your record because of how you do what you do and who you are in this day and age. I think the personality component to being an artist is a part of it. Um, and I'm going to get into that uh, a little bit more of that later, but the whole thing of a creative business, it has no ceiling. This is very important in terms mm -hmm. of its, its potential, the potential for a creative business, whether it be being a musician, a graphic designer, a remodeler of houses, uh, automotive modifications, Thing. I don't know. doesn't matter what it is. I just want to exclaim here that it's all kind of the same stuff. So if you're already in some other thing as a day job, maybe you can see the possibility of it, but it has no ceiling in terms of its potential mm -hmm. for success, for uh, connecting with people and solving problems and being creative and uh, maybe bringing a whole new aesthetic, a whole new concept to whatever arena that you're in. Right. Music, right. Music is a very easy place to do that. I mean, yeah, it's a it's a predictable predictable place to do that. But you make you make a good point about being in different uh, areas, different fields, where if you take that creative approach, you can set yourself aside or set yourself apart from the rest, and yeah. maybe make it that bigger thing. You know, Disruption. and get. And exactly. You use that word all the time. You know, it's very disruptive. It's 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 going against the grain. It's shaking things up. It's calling attention, you know, because yeah. you're doing things a little bit differently. And and that is what can make just a job like something more. You know what I mean? Yeah. And there's there's no limit in terms of how creative you can be. But there's also no limit in terms of what that can potentially earn. And I think once you look at it that way, um, it gets a lot more exciting. I'm not saying that there is a guaranteed success for anyone. One of the interesting things about being a creative person is that a lot of things don't work in every, sure. in every facet of what you do. Mm -hmm. So I, I think it's important to accept that and... Uh, yeah, <laughs> things don't work all the time. There's no guarantee uh, payout, but there is a guarantee in terms of things happening if you just keep doing it. Yeah, and if I can real quick and maybe not on topic of an example, but an example that I always use is like when I first started doing like video and then trying to get like freelance video jobs like um you know i didn't know much about cameras and video and i just told my wife i'm like i just need to get this camera i know i can do it i i wrote up this proposal to do this video job before i had a camera and was it for the music store yes it was for music uh, around amazing those videos and, are awesome and and then it, it turned out they're like, okay, maybe we should go forward with this. And I'm like, oh, crap. All right. So I had to get a camera and then learn and then figure. And, and but, but I told, you know, at the time, my wife, I, I, I told her, she's like, well, is this going to pay? And I'm like, this thing might not pay right away, but the next thing might. And that might lead to the next thing that will lead to the next thing. That's been my, my kind of thing thought process behind all of this creative stuff like and what put, what is your career right now what is your actual day job career? i am a video producer i'm a videographer and a video editor so there you go <laughs> there you go folks yeah it, it's worth trying so like i yeah i don't know what's i see that my network connection says low which doesn't make any sense i'm hardwired yeah, yeah your video uh quality is a little bit chunky but it, everything's coming through weird yeah i wonder so I, why it's all good i'm not even in video at all so whatever 
<laughs> yeah, sorry about the glitching tonight, guys. I I don't even know. Sense. I don't even know how to go about fixing my problem, but that's another. Oh, we're thing. gonna figure it out. Yeah, we're gonna figure it out. But the point I was trying to make real quick before we go into the next st- topic was like, you know, it's worth uh, trying. Oh, yeah, it's worth trying. When I when I, I was putting money into like getting my early my EP mastered and and stuff like that, like. And, and, you know, my wife, she's not, she wasn't doubting it, but she was just like, is this going to like, are you going to make money off of this? And I'm like, doubt it, but it'll lead to something else, you know? Yeah. It'll lead, it'll lead to something. And I always feel that way. So, yeah. um, yeah, I, I agree a hundred percent. It's like uh development of a void is you know kind of sums it up he says working hard is never a waste of time and the interesting thing about the pursuit of a creative endeavor is it never really feels like work so you can work actually way harder at it yeah don't you find say it again because i got distracted uh so uh development of a void uh, uh, yeah of a void says working hard is never a waste of time which i agree with however when you are in the pursuit of a oh creative, yeah if you're in the pursuit of a creative endeavor it never really feels like you're working that hard right which, which means you can work probably 10 times harder than the average person on that thing right yes yeah there is yeah, because we work hard at what we're doing here, but we enjoy what we're doing. We enjoy video and, yeah, it's and music. It is. It. it really is. It allows us to get into that flow state. So like you said, you're able to kind of push through obstacles and shit not working because it's like, well, we'd rather have a conversation and not see Bun than not do it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's just an example. But uh Real quick, I want to acknowledge some generous folk. Um, okay. yeah, yeah, because yeah, because where did it go? Where did it go? Where did it go? Anthony, I believe. Anthony yes. Nieto. Anthony Nieto. Nieto, thank you very much. I appreciate you. Thank you for being here. Again, sorry. Do you know we... Anthony? Have you met Anthony before? No, no. Anthony is a solid dude. I like solid dudes. Tim yeah. Wheeler, thank you. Tim Wheeler, appreciate awesome you. dude. We are working on continuing the cool content. We we we're glad that you guys dig this stuff. It it is uh it's enjoyable for us for the bun and I to kind of um to to offer this knowledge up. And like we say all the time, you know, um, high tide raises all boats. So yeah, you know, if we can and, be helpful. Yeah, and and to, I want to be sort of like a hundred percent transfer transparent is. Uh, I'm not always talking about things that I absolutely know. Uh, sometimes I'm talking about things that are hypothetical, conceptual, or I'm currently in the process of. So it is experimental, I suppose. Yeah, that's the case, I think, for both of us. That's something maybe like it's a good preface, but just assume we aren't experts at this. We're learning as we're going. Yeah, we've and, we've we've uh, run in run up uh, run up against obstacles and 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 adjusted, and we we all the time Bun and I go back and forth about like what isn't working, what we need to change, and it's it's a constant thing, and it's you know um, we're always learning, we're always learning, yeah. and when we feel like we kind of like have an aha moment. It usually ends up in one of these episodes or on your yeah. live stream or on my <laughs> live stream because um, because like we stand we're like, oh, it's like like you figured out that part of the Rubik's Cube, you know? Yeah. So let me show you, you know, let me show yeah. you. So uh, Cosman says if you stay open or stay positive to and open to opportunities, if even at the moment they don't seem connected. Uh, keep walking through those doors. The universe may be sending growth in disguise. And I think this is actually. Uh, an I think there's something to it. Yeah. Yeah. There's something to it. And I think this is kind of what's happening with Cosman right now himself. You know, he's been musing on 
uh, starting up a reverb store and stuff like this. And he's been participating in various things like this, like mm -hmm. the streams and uh, hopefully our, hopefully the community on, what is it? Discord, the Discord thing we yep. get going. Yep. We'll talk about that later. But uh, Cosman is just always hanging out and uh, interacting. And I think through that process, Cosman, you can, uh, you know, maybe share a little bit of your insight or not. It's up to you in the comments. But uh, I think that you, your ability to just show up and connect and just participate in the conversation has actually led to some interesting uh, developments in your personal, you know, your personal endeavors, your personal business endeavors, your your goals as, uh, you know, an audio electrical guy, all that kind of stuff. So, yeah. Yeah, you know, the th one thing you're going to realize um, for those of you that are new and, and those of you that are in the chat and joining us on the various shows and in, in the comment sections of videos is, you know, if you have a creative idea or like an aspiration or as some as the old saying goes, a wild hair, Bun and I, <laughs> the Bun and I are going to be like, give it a shot. What have you yeah. got to lose? Try it. Yeah. yeah, that's a good idea. You should try it. We are, we are sure. definitely those people. I, and, and in my friend circle too, I am always those pe that person that is like, you should do this. Why aren't you doing this? And what's interesting about that? No one ever talks about this, but, uh, being that person in a friend group, cause I am definitely that person. I will always say, do it, try it, go for yeah. it. Don't worry about like, don't wait, just do it do it crappy. And if you can do it crappy, then maybe you can do it better. But, uh, because a lot of people that are waiting to do it as best as possible, and then they never do anything ever. And what's interesting about that is, uh, you can bank that most people are never going to even try. So if you, that, that like, that's another thing to sort of pay forward is like, it's worth trying because I already know that the, the average person is never even going to come around to trying, let mm -hmm. alone try. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, that's huge to think about. That is please, very, very huge to think about. Please try. <laughs> please try. Yeah. <laughs> it's worth it. Uh, so I want to move along to the next topic here, Nick Hill. It's going to be, it's going to be some more, uh, yeah. more questions for you. Yep. Are you ready? I'm ready. Let's All do right. it. Okay. So the next, the topic headline is fake it till you make it. Everyone hears this. And, yeah. uh, I don't know if it, I think it's always, uh, there's a bunch of ways we can interpret fake it till you make it, but, <sighs> Excuse me. I apologize. <laughs> well, that's those beers. Those beers. Uh, the way that I want to think about this fake it till you make it thing is pretending that you're a big uh, and you're not. And I, I have to apologize. I could not find what I wanted to reference. There is this rap guy. He is, I think he's Trini guy. Like I think he's a, a East or Western West Indies guy. Hmm. living in the United States and he, he might be Indian. I'm not, I couldn't, I couldn't double check my, my sources, but I've come across this guy's stuff a million times and he is the fastest guy to call out people who are faking it till you make it. And he's in the rap world. Yeah. And the way he got to where he got to was by releasing 10 albums a year not joking. Wow. Like, in, like I might not be perfect on the numbers, but just releasing an incredible amount of music and just doing it over and over and over and over again. And of course, when you pretend you're, or like the difference between pretending you are big compared to a ton of output is the benefit of the development of actually just doing it. So in a year's time, 
the amount of energy that you would spend pretending you are big versus if you just spent every available hour that is a free hour doing whatever it is your craft is, I'm pretty sure things will start to take off for you. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. Um, so my question is, uh, have you ever found yourself either A, in a position where you were maybe trying to fake it till you make it, or B, where you felt the pressure where it's like, oh, I think this is what people do. And I think I need to think about how to be this way. Hmm. You, so I and, get the I get the fake it till you make it mentality. I get I mean, I get the sentiment. Um, it's like I think it's it, it's been kind of twisted and, uh, and 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 misconstrued a little bit where it's like so I, I the bet the better way to look at it I think is like dress for the job you want and what and, and it's sort of this on the same lines but what I look at it is like act and look professional and Very, yes but <clears throat> not to be confused with faking it yes I think it's different I think it's often confused with it yes uh, but I think it is legitimately a different process because we can, you can go on Instagram and see any number of people, um, uh, creatives and any, uh, like on any or in a, down any Avenue. Um, and you can see the fakers trying to make it. And then you can see the people who have made it because they've been putting in the work, you know? Yeah. So it's like, I if you're like small, it's an easy distinction, don't, do you not? I do. I agree. If you and, and I think there's simple things you can do, and that can be this can be for a whole nother episode. But it's like when we were kind of talking about like some of the the takeaways uh, or learnings or things we would do if we were starting a channel now. Like to me, it's like look professional, like clean aesthetics. Yeah. Um. um it's sure. like little things like this that I think go further than just like I don't know, like um, <laughs> stuff with no with no substance you're just uh. yeah go, like i think what that speaks to is going all in doing the best you can uh trying to be detailed uh, mm -hmm. as detailed as is important to you as is it as is important to your project mm -hmm. um but uh that is not faking it like having a great presentation especially if you know you've really put the time in to develop it even if you hired somebody and you worked if you've worked with somebody if you just bought it all maybe it's a bit different i don't know but uh like if you've spent some time to try and find like what you're all about and how to present it in the best way that is relevant to what you're doing I, like you can't be faulted for that no matter what stage you're at yeah you, Yes, that I think that's exactly it. Like, do all you can do. Like, make sure you're doing and putting in all the effort that you possibly can at whatever stage you're at, because you'll slowly creep up higher and higher. It, it's how, like, if go back and look at some of my early videos. This is the best example, like visual example I can get. And and Sean will get to. Uh, I'll get to your comment because I think it's a good one. Uh, look at that as a visual example of like the quality of my videos. And you can see, I tried different things like different shows, different things I tried where there'll be like one or two episodes and it was gone, you know, like you got to just get incrementally better. And I think it's cool. What, you know, us being a little bit more candid about what we're doing. I think it that's part of it too, is like showing the journey of growing, of getting better with this stuff. But also the thing you're putting out being the most professional thing that you can do with what you have at that time. I'm not saying go out and spend thousands of dollars you don't have on a piece of gear that you don't know how to use. I'm saying with what you have, like the things you can do with your phone or uh, an action cam, you know, just yeah. a video as an example. Figure no, out I what you have. Get the best out of what you can at the place you're at. And like you said, no one will fault you for it. You know? No one will fault you for it. And what's interesting about those examples is, you know, you and I know this well, 
quite well now, but I think it's uh, difficult to make heads or tails of earlier on is that the, um, the method towards the medium is not that important, but the content is very important. And what I mean by the content is the composition, the, uh, the actual nature of the output. Mm -hmm. You know, you can write a great book with a semi-broken pencil. Mm -hmm. it it's the story, like yeah. you're saying. Like, there, there's a story to what, even, like, the stuff that the Bun and I do, like, there is some level of story, you know, that we're trying to convey. Um, well, it's a story, but it's also, like... So the cam, you know, using a camera as an example, um, the camera doesn't have to be good. It's the yeah, the story that you you share with the camera. Also, how you light it. What is the framing? What mm -hmm. is the what is the content of it? The camera itself isn't that important. I use right. the worst cameras. Yeah, and and I think this like uh, my early yeah like without getting too much into the the technical it's like yeah you can you can eke out a good looking thing on something that isn't top of the line so yeah the point S is to same just same goes with guitars same goes with recording that's software. the story of my life with guitars like the solar <laughs> guitars i have are the first expensive or really nice guitars i've ever had everything else is i've never is all has always been used it's always been 300 bucks you know, that's how it's been. Yeah. Everything I've ever written and recorded up until I got my solar. Yeah. It's been on something affordable or used for yeah. second. You know, it's because that's what I could use. Yeah. Um, I just want to answer Sean's question real quick yes. or his comment. He said, so is it better to release? I, I'm going to take one second here. Yeah. I have to go to the other side of the room. Do it. He, uh, Sean's asking, and we'll get to the other ones too. I know Costman echoed um developments question so sean says so is it better to release your amateurish attempts as you make them or just keep making demos until you know the ideas are good enough for release well here's the thing i would say short quick answer release it put it out there's Bandcamp. you know it, it put it out you you got to put stuff out to know like where you need to improve you can continue to make a demo you can continue to mix something until you're blue in the face you'll keep making revisions put stuff out move on to the next thing put what stuff if, out move yeah. on to the next thing i know like, what this is about yeah I, I could hear it yeah uh, I, I agree 100 it's like be i okay, wait yeah yeah be okay with uh not being 100 because no matter how good you get you never really feel like you're ever going to get to 100 yeah, that doesn't ever go away. Like if you've, and I'm not, you know, like tooting my own horn or, or bun isn't doing that. Like if you like what I put on Spotify, I still think I can get better. I still think like there are parts of mixes that suck. I legitimately think that not because I'm like self-deprecating and I'm woe is me, but no, that you know, feeling you know, of like attaining more doesn't yeah. go away if you're passionate about it. So start now put stuff yeah. out and make the next thing a little bit better incrementally well, better yeah the beautiful thing about that that i'd like to uh i think it's really important to add is uh you, only in that process will you actually get really good at all of these things uh and when i when i say really good i mean really good in terms of the outside perception one thing about being on the inside is you just kind of feel like you're always the same. I always feel like it's the same, <laughs> but uh, it seems like things keep progressing, but uh, they progress better. It, the progression is a different kind of progression when you just commit and get it out there. Excuse me. It's all right. Oh, yeah. There we go. Um, Another question that a couple people wanted to hear the answer on, Bun, yeah. is uh, I think development of a void asked this and then Costman echoed it. What thought process do you go through when you don't feel motivated 
but put in the work anyway. I think you and I have talked about this. Yeah, we have. I think we should do a whole episode on it, actually. But um, the the big thing is, uh, I think the difference between a person who is kind of wishful and a person who is um, kind of putting in the putting in the reps, as Nick Hill likes to say it, mm -hmm. is uh, pushing past that first five minutes, ten minutes, whatever it takes, yeah, to to get into the, you know, these days in terms of uh, I don't know psychology and whatnot, they call it flow state. Uh, to me, it's just get in the vibe, get get going, get get productive. Um, one thing, so I can give two examples of what might be helpful in mm -hmm. that regard. Uh, number one is set a time. If you're like, I don't feel like it. I never feel like it. I'd rather eat chips and watch reruns of MASH. No one even knows what MASH is, but that's fine. I know but, what MASH is. You know MASH. But uh, so if that's the case, number one, it's like, okay, I'm going to commit. All I need to do is commit to five minutes, 10 minutes. I'm going to set a timer. I'm going to sit down and I'm going to get started with this thing, whatever it might be. Uh, and getting started means like, let's say your ambition is to record a track. Well, actually like open up the DAW. You, you have to get through that part. Open up the DAW, grab the guitar, ha make sure it's in tune and start actually recording for five minutes, 10 minutes, a short amount of time. Uh, and if at the end of that timing cycle, the alarm will go off. If at the time of the alarm, you feel like, you know, I really don't feel like doing this, shut it down. But most people are going to be like, oh, I'm, I'm in deep enough. I'm ready. I'm good to go. And, yeah. uh, and most people will continue. And I had to do that with myself for a while. Uh, yeah, I've had to... already like 15 years ago, but I've had to do that too. I mean, yeah. I've had to like, and, and there are many, I think we should have a show about this, like techniques and ideas to like maybe inspire or push yourself a little bit. But I also think there's something to acknowledge and that's, it's okay to not be into it like do yeah. something different sometimes you need to do something different sometimes i don't do this very often but you guys have all been living the same year that we all have this year i binged a few times on some shows <laughs> like that's very not nick you know yeah. so i was finding myself like not motivated uninspired really down so i gave myself that you know something that ladies my my lady bosses use all the time is grace i gave right. myself some grace to feel the way i was feeling um and, and bun put a pin in ratho because he said something yeah. really good um like I gave myself that space and my wife had a real r rough year too. Like she lost her job of 17 years and I was like, you are allowed to feel however you want to feel. Okay. I'm going to be here for you and let you feel this way. I'm not going to try and talk you out of it. Um, I let that happen to myself a couple times this year, you know, and a little bit of time, a little bit of distance and space. Like I went harder into it. You yeah. know, I, I wrote a few songs after that. Like, it's okay to have those feelings. We like to like us creatives, musicians, what, whatever have you. We we really, there is this narrative like we're in it all the time. You got it more, 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 do, do, do. And I'm very much that <laughs> way. But also I'm realizing it's okay to go through these, like I said in my last video, not the one, uh, my last in the mix video, the personal video type thing. Peaks and valleys, my man. Like, you're going to be up high sometimes and like creative and you're going to be productive and feeling good about everything you do. And then you're going to get into a valley. It's inevitable. It's a wavelength where we work on wavelengths. You're going to be down at the bottom sometimes and I'll be like, what am I doing? Yeah. Don't worry what? about the bottom though. Give yourself the grace for the bottom, but don't worry about it. Right. No, like yeah. I'm not saying worry about it. I'm saying, I'm saying, 
expect it, not worry about it. I guess, I guess be okay. Realize be you're okay in with it. Yeah. yeah Realize you're one. in it. Realize you're yeah. in it and say like, okay, man, I need a little time. Go for a walk. Those are when I go for a walk. That's when, you know, I get into movies and cinema again. When I get into shows, like I discovered two shows I absolutely love because of it, you know, um, other genres of music, like, Again, I don't want to go like I don't want to ruin whatever episode we do it on because I think it's a good episode we could do. Yeah. But allow yourself that space and opportunity. It's okay to be downs, you know? Yeah. It's okay. Talk to people about it, you know? Acknowledge that you're like, dude, I am in the shit right now. We've done yeah. this. Yeah. I, you guys what it's like, you know, I not, I I don't want to like speak um out of turn bun, but like bun has come to me and said like are you just not feeling it right now? And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, and that's something I would have ever expected from bun, you know, but it happens. And that's when I was like, dude, we all go through this stuff. A lot of you guys say the same things and I'm not diminishing it. What I'm saying is we're right there with you. Yeah. Like just find ways to, to just, you know, keep it on the back burner. It'll come yeah. back around. You'll be okay. Find, yeah. Find find ways to be okay with, uh, like, you don't have to feel guilty about not being productive. But at the same time, um, whoa, stop recording. For some reason, my OBS was also recording the whole time. Oh, sick. We can put out the audio podcast. Great. Except <laughs> I think it's in, like, yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Um, so, uh, Ratho, it, you know, he talks about the, the, the pushing through, yeah. um, and it, you know, the benefit of pushing through and what's interesting, uh, the pushing through is, or not wish what's interesting is it, like, it usually works for most people. It usually works, but there's a second component to it and, um, if you're feeling unmotivated, so, and unmotivated in a different way than you've just outlined. So what you've just outlined is if you are always, you shouldn't feel guilty about taking a moment. Mm -hmm. If you need, if you need a moment, take a moment. Uh, don't, don't push through if you need a moment, but if you're like, most days I'm eating and, you know, slamming five, five, six beers. Well, that's not good. <laughs> and yeah. Uh, yeah. What? So the whole thing that we're talking about uh, pushing through that first little bit, uh, that's a cool hack. Second hack is typically if you can edit something. So with music, that's, this is a very easy thing. Um, make something that you can edit because psychologically the editing process is like this hook that will hook you in like actually yeah. recording riffs over and over again and getting them tight and all that kind of stuff that's actually pretty tough for a cold mind to to really like commit to right off the hop but if there's something that you can you're like, I have a hard time starting. I have a hard time getting into it. I have a hard time being inspired. If you want to kind of accelerate uh, all of those things, find something to edit. And the, edit yeah. the editing process is like this catalyst that will really get you going. And it really opens up creativity. It really opens up a lot. So pushing through, number one. Uh, number two, Find something to edit or create something that you can edit. Don't worry about the output. Just yeah. like get something down and it's like, okay, I'm going to just edit this and then, you know, redo it later. Do it, do a good take later, but like get something that you can start editing Yeah. because your creative process will start going. And if you really, 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 really don't feel it, then boot up Netflix and chill out for a day. But only yeah. if you haven't chilled out for the last 30 days. 
<laughs> right. Definitely put effort into trying. I like right those comment. He says maybe try consider motivation as the reward as the reward for starting something rather than that rather than something that you need to have to start, which is like super interesting and like this it's it's such a sick comment like and it, and it speaks to what you're saying like if you get past that five to ten minutes you might find yourself somewhere you wouldn't have been had you not started oh, and I, that will motivate you in turn yeah you know and i know I, that's happened to you i know I, it's happened to me that's my every day yeah so full disclaimer is like pretty much every day i don't feel like it <laughs> uh but every day i you know achieve quite a bit uh and end up with results that i'm pretty stoked on yeah because i push past that i, I already know that the first five minutes first 10 minutes is like always rough for me but i know if i push past it and I know that this is like a psychological phenomenon that is consistent across the human race. Right. Uh, so because I know it, it's easy for me to say because I know it and I live it. Uh, but I'm just trying to kind of pay that forward. I'm like, honestly, <laughs> this is a thing. Uh, you may not. You may be in the 1% where this is not the case and it's never going to work for you. But most people it's going to work for yeah um there's a lot of good you guys are just there's a lot of good conversation in the chat um yeah people are talking about different tactics and approaches to try and spawn motivation like let me use a, a good example that i'm kind of going along with what a lot well, a lot of you guys are saying is like can you are, are yeah. you going to be able to hold on to that for one second yeah yes uh i before we get into that i want to kind of like kill our topic kill it uh, yep do it and uh, so do you have your t what were you what were you going to talk about i it it's do you have it, it? Won't, it won't go away you're good okay Do, good i'm good i'm yep. gonna kill the, i'm gonna kill our topic really yep. quick yep uh our topic for today was uh thinking in terms of s small big and our uh, the point of today's topic is don't worry about small or big it doesn't matter think about i am an artist or I am a musician, whatever you choose to be. And I choose to make something of it. It could be a business. It could be, it could be a pastime. It's, it's up to you to, to decide what it is you want to make of it. Mm -hmm. But whatever you choose to make of it is your business. And you, you know, you can commit to that and you, you deserve it. Like it's, it's, on yeah. the it's on the table for you. Yeah. Um, and size doesn't matter how big, how small. It's so off the table. Just like, I am a music artist. I am a video artist, whatever the case may be. And then just plug in the actions in relationship to what it is you choose to be. So I am an artist. I am a musician. And then uh, depending on the criteria of your, you know, uh, your end goal. So I am an artist, but this is my, this is my outlet from, I like my career and yeah. I don't want to leave my career, but this is my outlet for my career, but I'm serious about it and I need to protect it because it's important to me or vice versa. I want to make it my career. Right. So, but don't worry about small or big. I really like, I think that's so important. The size of where you're at isn't important at all. Um, just choose what you want to do and go towards the end goal. Yeah. I think if you aspire, if you're like, even if this is a hobby, any of this video or music or whatever, painting, whatever it might be. Yeah. You know, if you're getting some enjoyment out of it and you want it to be more than just a hobby, just aim for like daily improvement, you know, I yeah. guess, you know, and it's not going to happen every day, but yeah. Like aim for it. Try. Try yeah. one thing in the right direction. Sometimes you're gonna have to, to sidestep. Sometimes you're gonna have to back up to see to get a better idea where you need to go. But like don't don't let where you currently are prevent you from getting where you could be. You know what I mean? Like Yeah. And uh if 
it's purely for enjoyment, that's still worth protecting. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, my, something my wife will say time to time is like, why does everything have to be a thing? You know, because my wife is very creative. She's very artsy. And I'm always like, ooh, like you could do this and you could put it on shirts and have an Etsy shop and people and, and then you could do this and you could paint this and people would buy it. It's like she's like, why does everything have to be a, a thing? I'm like, oh, I don't know. I'm like, because if you paint enough cute little drawings and enough people buy them, like maybe it doesn't have to do a job. Maybe it doesn't matter yeah. where you work. <laughs> yeah, That's it. That's that it. Plus. It's naive. I know. Yeah. Or it's very like grandiose. Yeah. I know it can't always be. It's not always seated in reality because not everybody wants to give up every bit of their non-working time or the time they're not spending on family to do this, to yeah. do the thing. Like, yeah. like bun, you work, you know. And you're not even, you know, you're working to get away from that. And then you do this and you have your, your lady and then you do this. You know, yeah. I have a job that I love and I put effort into. And then I have my kids and my wife and my dogs. But every other waking possible moment is this, is yeah. this music yeah. and video. Yeah. I don't really do any. That's why I was using the example of like acknowledging I needed a little headspace and binging because that's weird for me, you know. <laughs> it's weird for me to do, but but it's um, important. It is important. Yeah, you know. Uh, do you uh, still have your thought? Yeah. So, okay. um, I, I do I, well, think I do think we should do a, a video on this, like kind of using some of the guys' examples, um, using our own tactics that we we've used to push through, to motivate, to inspire. Yeah. I yeah. think that would be a good episode. But we can, since it's kind of like this came up in the chat organically and it's, it needs to be acknowledged. Um, Oh yeah, it's important. Um, something I, I did this, somebody, I inspired myself by, I wanted to see like, can I sound like Devin Townsend? Can I write a ripoff song of Devin Townsend? And what came out of that was I was experimenting with effects, which is something that I do to, <clears throat> I do to motivate my or to inspire myself to write riffs. I'll I'll mess with spacey ambient stuff and it will lead to riffs, heavy stuff. Yeah. It just happens. But <clears throat> you know, messing around with that led to this tone I came up with, led to these riffs, led to this epic song that I came up with that I feel is one of them, personally to me, one of the best things I've ever written. It's not the fastest thing or the riffiest thing or the heaviest thing at times, but it led me to write this thing that I wouldn't have ever written, you know, w with, without trying to find a different way to get myself into it, you know? Yeah. If you will. Yeah. Well, I, I remember that track and I remember you were at a loss for what to do next. And yeah. that's, that's the result of your what to do next. I don't know what to do. Yeah. I have no, I have no ideas. I have no whatever. And then you're like, I'm just going to do this, you know, quote and end quote, uh, generic thing. Mm -hmm. And it, it ended up being very satisfying. So Yeah, that's exactly it. It ended up being super, super satisfying. And I always think like, I wouldn't, man, I w if I would have just been like, uh, I can't do anything right now and not written this. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, um, again, I'm not poo-pooing anybody who's having that or doing that. Like, I've done it. There are there are terabytes, and I'm not kidding, Yeah, terabytes of proof that I start stuff and don't feel it. <laughs> you know what I mean? So. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I'm going to close off this topic and we're going to get, do you still have the thing in mind? Oh, that was it. That oh, okay. Was it. That was it. Okay. Good. Yeah. It was um, just going along I, with some of their chats. Yeah. Well, it's perfectly fitting with everything we're talking about. Um, but uh, closing off this small uh, thinking small, I am small. I am big thinking about this whole size thing. Um, and what really comes to mind there is, uh, two examples. Number one is, let's say 
you are a music artist and you finish a single or an EP or an LP, whatever, and you put it up on Bandcamp and you manage to actually sell a single or something to somebody you don't know. Yeah. And not a friend, not a cousin, not your girlfriend, somebody you don't know or, or your boyfriend, whatever the case may be. Uh, you sell it to somebody you don't know and that gap is massive between, right between zero and one and i think there's this thing like with people who just work straight jobs and never ever ever muse on creative things they don't really understand like how special one person is in terms of opting into what you're doing and it could be a non-monetary thing mm -hmm. so um, you know, non-monetary examples would be a follow in social media, uh, a subscription to an email digest or an email list, uh, watching your videos, uh, sharing your music with their friends, either in digital or maybe even in person. And maybe, uh, maybe it's a, a live show and they watch you, the opener, but they were there for the headliner. Right. You know, they, they give you their time. So those are non-monetary examples. And then monetary examples would be like people who went out of their way to buy your music, buy your merch, you know, subscribe on Patreon, go to the show, like pay the cover to see you, et cetera. Um, what I have found in my 20, I don't even know, a long time of playing music, especially live, and being kind of in community or being touring or anything like that right. is, is people tend to devalue this idea of a, a few people. But a few people is, it, it's very important. Oh like, yeah, like, yeah. I, I remember being in a band and I was definitely of the mindset of like, those four people just sat, they watched me play. We open. We. I was in. Yeah, I opened yeah. for when I was in a band, and I'm like, you guys on purpose. Yeah, you watched me play, and then yeah. they say, "Hey, good set." I'm like, thank you. Yeah. On top of sitting through it, they weren't sitting through it because they didn't like it. Right. They were. They were sitting through it because they're like, "This is sick," and yeah. they're like, "I want to let you know that was sick." Yeah. So for me, like the one was enough. And I've said this about YouTube, too, and I know it's very, very cheesy and something that most people would expect somebody to say. But, like, the fact... I remember when I was at 100 and I'm, like, 100 subscribers. I'm, like, this is mind-blowing to me. Yeah. I'm glad there's 100 people. I like that I've helped 100 people in, to some degree or they like me being sarcastic or whatever reason it is, you know? Like... Yeah. Uh, I've not ever been lost on the one, you know? Yeah, the one is very important. And so the reason why I kind of want to close off the small versus big thinking or whatever with this is that I think a lot of people squander that one, mm -hmm. those five, those ten, the, that hundred. Like whatever the medium you are in, um, uh, if you have a few people who are like behind you, you know, it's very important to acknowledge them, thank them and continue to share with them, uh, and share not only like what you're doing, not just like purely outputting, but share in the experience of being with them because these can be friends. Like, this is how I know you, Nick Hill. Yeah. This is how this happened. This is how you're like one of my closest homies. Yeah. Is through this whole process. I would never have known you. Yeah. And I think it's like, it sounds uh, and oftentimes what, what's that thing that saying you say, the thing is the thing or <laughs> the main thing is keeping the main thing, the main thing. Yeah. So that sounds very, uh -huh, but it sounds dumb, but it's so smart. It, <laughs> yeah, and I'm going to say something that's kind of along those lines that most people would be like, uh, or those people who don't want to hear it. It's like, listen, man, 
you're not going to get to five people streaming your song without that first person. You're not going to, you know what I mean? Like yeah. it's, it's like common oh. sense, but it's start so with one because if there's one, there's more, you know? Well, and, and one is like I say, the biggest gap in anybody who is going to give you time or opt in or uh, kind of like share their time with you and afford you to share time with them. That's like, that's huge. So being yeah. small, fuck this thing of being small. I just cursed it's the stream. Who cares? <laughs> it's also, there's so much more into that. And, and I don't know if you've thought about it, but like the zero to one gap, like getting that first person, that first fan or listener or view. It's like, imagine like we just talked about all this. Like somebody mentioned like, well, do I put out a demo or just keep trying to make it better? Like, if you don't put that thing out, if you don't record that video, you're, of course, you're not going to get one. You're not going to get to that one. So there's all of this self realization, all of this, this courage you need to put into exposing yourself. And then, like, there's like so much going into the one. Like, you know, and like, so I know what much. you I know what you meant by the one, but it's also like even on like a a low a low behind like 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 oh man, I'm so rambly right now. I realize, but it's there's so much to this, guys. Like when when you guys you put up these obstacles on like like Bun says, you feel small or whatever. It's like you got you have to be you, of course you are, but you got to do it anyway because it there's has, one it has, has no uh, impact it has no meaning in terms of what you're doing that's the interesting thing about this idea of small or large it doesn't okay. matter <laughs> poo ninja poo ninja just made a joke but, but it's, it's for real it's yeah. genius yeah it really is because what can you do with binary you know what i mean everything an incredible amount of things it is the whole way that this thing is happening that we're doing right now. And it's just a series of ones and zeros. One is on and zero is off. Oh, and he's, you know, he's also quoting clutch, which I can always go for. <laughs> you know, I like that clutch. Absolutely. Yeah, guys. So, you know, we kind of went all over the place and we'll get to the comments again before before we go of course yeah um but the point that of like bun was just so passionate about this ep i say that because him and i he'll start a uh he'll start a doc for each of these episodes and brain dump his ideas he has so much on here and i'm like this is like his jam because he knows like i i'm saying like a lot <laughs> i like it that's like i like it you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, it's funny that I'm f I'm falling into that right now because I'm so Dude, we are at the mall right now. We totally are, dude. Dude, we're at the mall. It's pretty friggin' like pretty like cool. Okay, a quick tangent cuz Barry yeah. just told me the bucks are up by 6 with 5 minutes to go. Um, oh, the bucks. I'm so sick of like the cable contract situation because <laughs> I can't watch games right now because I don't want cable. I don't want to pay for cable T television. That is Reddit streams, bro. I, I can't bring myself to do it. I want a quality <laughs> feed. I want a quality feed, man. Uh... But anyway, um, <laughs> <laughs> this is important yeah it is important this is important stuff man like yeah. you guys we're gonna we're gonna tell you that anytime you come on the chat and ask these questions or somebody else inevitably is going to ask the question you know uh, that you guys have asked like should i put this out um oh, the poo this poo ninja quote mm. i'm sure it's like a it might be a general quote maybe maybe that uh poo ninja came up with it i'm not sure but if the light from the star is in your eye. Is there really any distance between you and the star? Everything is one. Um, like that sounds that sounds like um, a uh, 
a Bruce Lee thing. But, <laughs> you know, if you know anything about light and physics and all of that, yeah. <laughs> right. It's uh That's true, yeah. 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 <laughs> That's deep stuff right there. Yeah. I, I got to dip to the room beside me. Do you have okay. to do that? Yeah. Uh, so uh, we're done with the topic. I like kind of want to just hang out. I know it's a little bit late, but we got a late start. Are you up for it, Nick? We can hang out. Yeah, we can hang for, out for a couple more minutes. Yeah, right? absolutely. Uh, but you got to like, do your thing. Yeah, I got to do. Go tinkle. Thing. Uh, hang out in the chat though for a little yeah. bit. And... Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Do it. Um, yeah, a lot of good topics, guys, in the in the chat. Um, we all struggle with these same things, man. Um, of when I first started talking to Bun, I had a bunch of demos and I was kicking around the idea of putting out music and I'm like, well, I don't have a band. I don't have a singer. I can't put music out. I was putting up all these obstacles, putting up all these hurdles. And then finally Bun's like, dude, just put it out. Just put it out. Put out the EP of your best demos of your best tracks so what I ended up doing is taking my demos and like, okay, I'm going to do one good final polish, you know? And I re-recorded these songs. I wrote a couple. So in the process of recording these tracks that I had for a couple years, I ended up writing a few more tracks to flesh out my EP. And then I put it out. And ever since then, I've been putting out music on a pretty regular basis and the point i'm trying to make is like i was putting up my own hurdles i was putting up these own obstacles thinking like you know i needed this that or the other thing in order to do it and you know bun kind of talked me into putting out the ep and i'm like just just do it and i did and i'm glad i did because now i have x amount of singles after that and you have to start with that first thing for sure yeah, yeah you got to put the thing you got to throw out an anchor so that you can actually make some movement which sounds weird like i don't know if that's like a that's not a saying but <laughs> Like if you throw out an anchor, you're like, here I am. Um, you take over. I'm going to go do the same. Yeah. But if you throw something out, it just gives you a home base. And then from there, uh, it can be, you know, momentum. Momentum is a tough thing. Uh, where's the confounded bridge is how I feel most every time I write something. Uh, <laughs> Poo Ninja. Um it's like, yeah, the, uh, or I, I think you're talking about like, where is the, uh, the awesome, the, the thing, the, the wild part of the song, uh, you know, where is the part that I can pour the most of myself into and get lost in and not care about. And, uh, yeah, <laughs> maybe you're not talking about that. Uh, Cosmo, that EP reeled me in, dude. Oh, uh, for Nick Hill's EP. Yeah, uh, that's the Ample Chattels EP, I think, Cosmo, that you're talking about. I got to design the cover for that one. Um, but uh, it's a good EP. It's it's the best to date from the Mr. Nick. <clears throat> Uh, Barry Poser says, man, I used to overanalyze my mixes and it would, uh, take me weeks to finish a mix. Now I just do the best I can and move on. So, uh, yeah. Uh, and I think all of us have been in this exact yeah. seat, uh, whether it be with mixes or maybe even parts, there's, there's a variety of things, but I think when you get into the whole, uh, recording thing, one of the places that's really easy to obsess on is the mix, um, especially before you have an understanding of how the mix is going to uh, interact with the master. Right. Be 
because a lot of times you'll get the master back and you're like, oh, this is effed up. Um, and you kind of got to get some legs or some ears, I guess, for how the mix is going to relate to the master. And there are different mastering people and getting a sense of how they work uh, might be part of the thing. Or if you're going to master it yourself, it's like, okay, how do these two um, stages of the production, how do they relate to each other and what's important in that? Uh, so it's really easy to get lost in either the mix or the master. Usually it's the mix though. Yeah. Yeah. That's something everybody struggles with. I think you just, like you guys said, um, you kind of just need to tell, ask yourself, do I really want to put this out or not? If it's yeah. yes, then you'll stop mixing. Yeah. You know, you know, what's interesting is, uh, this is kind of after the metropolitan EP, uh, the foreign's Metro metropolitan EP. Um, you know, I think it's okay. When I listen to it now, I'm like, oh, I could mix that so much better. And my philosophy after all of that is really just like not really mixing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, it's funny. Like, I really enjoy mixing. I enjoy mixing other stuff. I've had an opportunity to mix other people's stuff a few times. And it's something that I really do like to do. Um, and I think like how do i i think it's because i don't get lost in th it's like when you're mixing somebody else's thing you're just listening to it for what it is when you're mixing yeah. your own stuff you get like you lost to in be this... something else yeah yeah so when you that I, you summed it up in talking about mixing a, another person's stuff is what you gain in mixing somebody else's stuff, working on anybody else's stuff, uh, is you gain perspective mm -hmm. that the the creator will never have. Mm -hmm. The creator is completely lost within their idea of what they want it to be. And getting so that's another topic. That's another live stream. <laughs> yeah. Is is getting getting very real with yourself it's like what do i want this to be and what is it in yeah. terms of a it could be in terms of a album it could be in terms of the actual music project itself like all the people involved and the live performance etc um it could be the business of an endeavor it doesn't matter really what the criteria is of the arrangement but yeah, being very real about what is the thing and uh, what is my desire, the hat that I, that I place on it. Yeah. And so I'm curious, Nick Hill, do you, are you inside of that? Do you know what, uh, what your thing is about, or are you comfortable with what your thing is about? Or are you sort of still stuck in this thing where you're like, I want it to be something. And I'm going to say that you've resolved this, but I'm curious how you think about it. Like you want it, do you want it to be something more than it is and you always feel like you're coming up way short on it and that you just have to give up so much like in the like, like how how real are you about what you want your music your art life to be versus what it actually is that's so the I th easiest way okay to say it. i think the biggest um when it comes it, all right there's a couple different ways i can answer this when it comes to mixing now um and it, oh man this is like so many topics on top of topics um <laughs> getting like getting getting this is like i talk about this in guitar tone videos getting stuff as close to how i think it should sound in a mix at the source is something i've really like made it a mantra now yeah and very smart the less i need to do 
um, getting stuff to sound good. The more when I'm, I think when I'm mixing nowadays with, with, with set aside drums, I'm mixing to like create the soundscape of whatever song that is. You know what I mean? Like the guitar tones. Yeah. People are like, well, what, how come you don't DI and record a DI's and you go back and reamp? Like uh, if I did that, you guys would have never hear a new song again. <laughs> No DIs for Nick. I'm printing that goddamn tone. It's I'm over. printing it's it. It's done. It's done. Like I know what it's sh- where it should fit on the spectrum. I know I'm probably gonna have to notch a couple things, but I'm done with it. I don't care. When I'm mixing, it's more to get the vibe of the track and, and like layering and fun stuff. I guess it's like the I'm I'm adding the the you know the the icing on the cake that is the track already in my mixes and then the mastering part is sort of like the back end of my mix and then doing what i do for mastering i i i don't like saying that because people ask me and i know they ask you about final master and i'm like i still i know what i'm so doing but i also don't know what i'm doing when it comes to mastering <laughs> i know what i'm aiming for i know what i should yeah. be doing i don't know why i'm doing it and i don't know the the behind everything behind why i'm doing it and I, it's uncomfortable and that's yeah. why i don't answer it like I, you probably won't see a mastering video by me anytime soon yeah because i don't think you want to do it the way i do it i, yeah. I know it's not right in air quotes you know yeah uh if I had to like with mastering, I know exactly what mastering is and what it's about. And I, Mm -hmm. I understand the tools of it 100%, Mm -hmm. but I am not good at mastering. However, Mm -hmm. I have mastered many records, uh, Mm -hmm. but I am not a mastering engineer and I know people who are, and I know the difference. I know the difference like a hundred percent. Yeah you know um so. and then the, the other side of it is like you said like what like kind of, there's this kind of thing like i can't play how i always want a direction of a song to go yeah i can't, I, 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 I can't play it yeah well, i hear a, stuff you, in my head you are a way better musician than i am and uh <laughs> <laughs> you have more control more it, control of your hands than i do you know it's funny and and the more we get to know fellow musicians and youtube guys who do music stuff it's like i wonder i always wonder this like so i've said this to you like you write stuff that i wish i could write you know and you're and meanwhile you're thinking like i write what i'm capable of writing and it's because of this that or the other thing and i'm like i like i (laughs) I, I don't know what to say because like I don't think I could write a bun riff or like a foreign's riff, you know? I want to. Right. But I can't do it. And whatever makes me my music or my music sound like me, you know, I know that people would have a hard time do it because I know I have a way of playing that contributes to the way my shit sounds. Yeah, um, you have you have amazing pick control. Number one, uh, number two, like the evenness of your overall delivery and like the control of your uh, desired end goal is very evident. So, the, I think that comes from twenty years of trying to of playing with a click, trying to record stuff. There's something to be yeah. said about just if you're. Here's another thing: if you're feeling uninspired, just try and record some stuff. <laughs> you know <laughs> just try and record some stuff yeah you turn like the click is yep the click is a um reality like the click <laughs> the click will never lie to you ever and if you're it's not about uh what's what's it called when you put everything on the grid this is not what we're talking about no not quantization or anything yeah like right right the click the click so what the click tells you is where the beat is and your uh, job as a musician is to decide where the beat in fact is and it yes may be, it may be on the click it may be 
slightly ahead of the click, might be slightly back. It might be completely counter to what the click is. But if you understand the click, then you have a greater musical understanding and a greater control of uh, the time and space of music. Yeah. And I, I love the click. But I love I, the click too. I remember a time very clearly where I was afraid of the click. The click, the click was a lion. Yep. <laughs> yep. What's scarier, a lion or a tiger? I don't know. Tigers look pretty scary. Tigers, yeah, look bigger, aren't they? <laughs> yeah. So the click was a tiger for sure. But yeah. Um, uh, anyway, the the point is like there so yeah i on one hand i am fine or i know how to get where i want to get on the other hand i wish i was a different i wish i was like a little bit more uh, i wish i was a better guitar player yeah because i can't do. i can't always play what i hear in my head and that, well that's that's a topic right there it's like yeah i'm pretty sure uh everybody in the chat we're, we're kind of like musing on a whole bunch of topics here. I apologize. I know, right? Ch chat pals. Um, Tim, Barry, Dylan. Dylan, you're always funny. So keep it, keep the funny going. <laughs> uh, Poon Ninja, Cosman, Gear Stuff and Things. Have not acknowledged Gear Stuff and Things. Steven. Oh, Steven, yes. I, yeah. I, I kind of waved at the camera. He said hi earlier, but you were yeah. in the middle of... Uh, right. uh, amusing so i didn't I'm want to interrupt yeah it. I'm, I'm realizing right now that we're a little bit behind there and uh yeah gear stuff gear stuff and things is a amazing your youtube channel steven is a rad dude um but uh cosman dylan jeremy jeremy have a good night brother yeah jeremy be well but uh this whole thing um you know me, me, uh, go ahead sorry. No, go. go ahead. I was just going to say, I, I, um, I like what's been going on in the chat, you know, um, being a little more open about where we're stuck, our obstacles, like real world, you know, stuff that I don't know, man, there, this, I don't know. It's like, we, especially it's, you know, a sausage fest here. We, we, we like dudes like to shy away from talking about this stuff. Yeah, that's actually a really interesting point. Like, and I think it's maybe been my greatest frustration. Frustration? Can I, French. French. You sounded really? super French back there. Yeah. Parce que je suis français. Je parle français très bien. Là. Mais, uh... <laughs> uh, Mon chéri. Oui, oui. Ah, oh, votre accent, c'est bon. Um, but uh the whole thing what were what was the i was talking about how like oh yeah the, the sausage like, fest dudes dude, don't dude like fest. to talk about our feelings yeah yeah and that's something that's really interesting is that um and my biggest frustration when i was a kid getting into all this is so much so many people were like oh uh like everything has got to be macho, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I what? Well, yeah, I, 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 just, I really like, appreciate that it's not like a macho right du dude fest. In I, even though it's, it's all dudes, uh, I. I like that the dudes are like, yeah, this is how I feel. This is what I do. This is what it's I okay do. to acknowledge this stuff. And I said that yeah. in, the, in this last video I put out. It's like, it's okay to acknowledge you're going through something or talk about something. Like, hey, cause, because guess what? As much as we'd like to think like, dude, I'm lost. I'm alone. I'm an, uh, on an island. No, you're not. <laughs> you're <laughs> not. not. not and that's all, not ever. a, it's not me saying like, get over it. It's like, no, man, talk to somebody next to you. They've been through it or they or or, or they know somebody. It's like, it's weird volume stuff all of a sudden. I don't know. I'm probably sitting back too far. Sorry. 
Oh no, it was your like your open earphones oh. plus the guitar plus the plus I think uh, I have some like the mic depression thing. bullshit yeah. on. Yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> sorry, sorry. It's all good. It's all good. But uh, yeah, it's good to talk about this stuff. And I think um, while it doesn't always have to be like the deep dark stuff, that's what Bun and I want to do is talk about like everything that goes into this. Like like the like thinking you're a small artist. You know that is. That's basically just an obstacle that's going to keep you from doing what you want to do. Yeah, it's it's the worst thing. <laughs> yeah. You know, no, like, not even that far along uh, with this, like, as a solo kind of person. Mm -hmm. And, uh, of, you know, it's clearly uh, shown itself. It's clearly proven itself over and over and over again that thinking that way is not a good idea not a good idea at all yeah agreed yeah but uh ba -ba 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 -ba. 10 07 oh it's just past 10 so are we so question to you nick hill is do we uh close down soon or uh do we go a little bit longer yeah, I mean, at le we got the episode in, which I'm happy with. Dylan, let's talk about our feelings. I feel like all this feeling talk is super gay. <laughs> Dylan, you're the worst. <laughs> because I know you're... The, the funny part is, is I know you're a really cool guy. <laughs> you can You can have those feelings. Yeah. What like what's what's wrong with gay? You know? <laughs> exactly. What, what what do you got against gay? I'm a gay uh, supporter. I'm pro gay. I'm super pro gay. Uh, with guitar, I believe. Uh, uh, no, 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 I'm in the basement. <laughs> <laughs> so am I. I'm in the basement today, and it's cold. Uh, is your self talk okay, Cosman? Is your self talk limiting you? This is a, a good one. Uh, I talked to myself for four hours today in the car while listening to your jam, Nick. <laughs> yeah. So in some cases, self-talk is totally cool in that case. Uh, Dylan, you're, you're back paddling there. <laughs> <laughs> no, Dylan, you're cool. You're a good dude. I know you're a good dude. Uh, I don't even know you, but I know you're a good Dylan's dude. a sweetheart. He is. Yeah. yeah. He won't. He doesn't like when I say that, but he is. Yeah. He's going to be like, I want to flex harder. It's fine. It's fine. Uh, but yeah, self-talk. The self-talk. I, I think that's what today's topic is all about. Yeah. You know, am I small, like small or large? And like, where do I fit on the grid? And how do I compare and all that kind of stuff? And it's just like none of that stuff matters, man. I, like the thing that matters the most always is just like do the thing and get it going, get it out there. And I think like if you're going to, oh, excuse me, if you're going to share something like video, oh, I'm so gassy. Uh Apologies. How but if you're going to share something like video, the like if if you're going to share something that is beneficial to somebody else in terms of like being helpful, like there's never a reason to be. Uh, I don't know. Self-conscious about it. Yeah. OK. Yeah, that's a good point. One of the first videos that I saw get, getting any traction on my channel was a video um, before I felt comfortable being in front of the camera, before I felt comfortable talking in front of the camera. Yeah, our pal and, Cosman is on that very journey at the very beginning right now. Yeah, and it's good because you got to go through it. Mm -hmm. you got to go through that. But the point I'm trying to make is like... Oh, shit, what was the point I was trying to make? Oh, yeah, so I made this video, and people 
were like, thank you so much. I didn't know how to do this. This help. This is helping me so much. And I'm like, hey, okay. All right. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, the, the I, God damn it. My train of thought. <laughs> It's, did Putin in his, uh, yeah. comment take you for a loop? Yeah, <laughs> god damn it, dude. <laughs> he's, he's effing with you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, like, if you're, if you're going to get into the video thing uh, and your whole thing. So, Sean Heath. Sean Heath was in the stream tonight. He's yeah. He, he lives in Germany, so he's probably gone to bed to buy by now. Probably. But um and Cosman is just starting this thing. Um but both of those guys do videos that are about something really specific and they're like, Oh, I wanna show that you can do this. And not only that you can do this, but also how you can do this thing. Yeah. And I think if you're gonna get into the video world and do that kind of stuff, um, you never really have to worry because your goal is to always help someone. And if somebody doesn't get it or somebody doesn't take it that way, that's too bad for them. Right. Um, but the reality is, is it's actually gonna be of some use to most people. The thing is, no matter how legitimately helpful a video is, there's going to be somebody that does not find it helpful and feels like they need to point that out. Right. So don't don't worry, worry about, about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's interesting. Uh, before the stream, um, like when I got off work today and I was hanging out with... Uh, I was, I was on the phone hanging out with Carrie, my, my mm -hmm. girlfriend. Yeah. Um, the whole conversation was, or the majority of the conversation was about that kind of stuff is, uh, number one is it's not for everyone. So the thing that you do, Nick Hill, the thing mm -hmm. that Cosman does, the thing that Sean Heath does, Sean Heath is still up. <laughs> <laughs> or just just got up the thing that tim wheeler does the thing that everybody does dylan uh gear stuff and things the thing that everybody does is not for everyone right it and just isn't and yeah it never will be and it doesn't matter like it, it it shouldn't be for everyone because if you try to make something for everyone it sucks like mcdonald's is a great example of that yeah. Like, do you want to make music that is for everybody? Think about what that is. What kind of music would that be? It would suck. Yeah. That's not. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's not the point of it all. Um, damn it. I had a thought, but now it's gone. It's fine. It will come back because that's how we roll. Yeah. But. Oh, yeah. Okay. Now I remember. You know, this topic of saturation will come up, too. You know, especially in our little niche oh, gu yeah. guitar YouTuber thing. It's like. Right. Oh, Everybody. another. Oh, you're just another guitar, guitar YouTuber. It's like, okay, great. I'm like, well, dude totally like, relates to I'm not still for me. everyone. Yeah, I'm still me though. Like Yeah. Uh we could both make the uh, it would be an interesting experiment to get a couple of the guys that we've met online and we all make the same video. Question, okay. Right now, right now, real time. Yeah. Who in the chat has a Helix and we all need to make a tone like it's not Good night, really, brother. It's not a tone challenge, but like we all need to make a tone in some way uh, that is specific to this idea where what 
uh, uh, I, I don't know how you would set up the parameters or whatever, but like, so that everybody was on the same page, but to see how different the end result was for everyone and everybody shared it in the same place and we all got to play it and all got to compare it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what the, the means with the device that would be, but the point we would all take away from it is like my personality and, it, and, and I think, and Bun, you see this, like you guys are getting more and more of my, my personality. I still am not totally me in all of my videos. Um, because I'm trying to be more helpful than Nick, you know, but like Bun has his super stoked approach to things. And then I have my helpful, but sarcastic and like, you need to do some work too. Like, <laughs> and, and Steven will have like his very sweet and soft spoken matter of fact way about him. You know, it's like we could all do the same damn thing and, our unique individuality will be in it. And there's going to be people that like bun more than like me. Uh, that's, that would be very interesting too. Is like, I wonder how many people like your channel that don't like mine or vice versa. And not that it mad, not that it's about like, you know, it's not about that. It's about like, the point is there are going to be people that like me and my delivery. There are going to be people that prefer you and your delivery. There are going to be people that, you know, whatever you know yeah i don't know that's a difficult thing to like quantify um like what is it that makes a a particular personality uh more or less we would just enjoyable. have to, yeah it would just have to be from the from the direct from the the angle of a complete social experiment you know like if we were to write if we were to script out a video right doing the same thing oh, like let's do it Let's do it. Yeah. How about you, you, me, and Steven? Steven, I don't know. You're like, you're here, but like, I, I don't know if you're in, but like, how about we all, all three of us? Yeah, you we, have to wear a flannel shirt as well. <laughs> we'll all make the exact same video. And it's not about who's does better. It's no, not it's about not that. A, it's about like seeing if there's a way we can gauge. Well, I just want to see like how different. So the way this topic opened up was uh, how saturation. So the 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 print the, yeah. the an anchor of like this you topic get the point I'm trying. You get the point I'm trying to make. I'm trying to oh, do it through, through a hundred percent a long winded like social yeah. experiment. <laughs> so it would be amazing. Like I would love to do it with like making a tone with more of like more of the people out there. Uh, but it would also be interesting if the three of us made the exact same video. There's like and a we... buttload of people that want to get in on this. Yeah. Like, I think we might have more YouTubers in the chat than we think we do. <laughs> all right, let's do it. So we all make the exact. So whoever has a YouTube channel, we all make the exact same video and we get on a Google doc and we write the whole show together, right? Yeah, so this the is script, interesting. The script is exactly the same. The topic is exactly the same. And the big difference is like how we actually do it. Um, yeah. And what would be interesting to see is like how the perspective of the individual brings something unique always, so that no is matter what. what. Yeah. Yes. And I think that's your point of the saturation topic. Yeah. And I think it's a really important topic. Like yeah. The individual has a unique, uh, you know, a, a unique. It's look really and kind approach. of everything. Yeah. You know, <laughs> it, it doesn't. Maybe we need to find something agnostic. Like, it doesn't have to be a helix. Maybe we need to find something. No, we well, should actually make it about the helix. So, not, cause not, yeah, okay. So, for this social experiment, guys, um, if you don't have a helix, you can get helix native, or you can get a, a trial of it if you want to participate in this. Bun, we need to do a little legwork on this first. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. Okay. Well, 
Okay. We need to like come up with the so bullet points. Here, there should be here's, bullet points. Here's, here's the segue. The segue is we have a Discord group that we're launching. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, and maybe what we do is we figure it out in the Discord group. Oh, genius. Okay. Yeah. That, I don't, that... So I don't know the address of the Discord group. I know that it's mine, <laughs> but I don't know what it is. Uh, how do, if, we, how, how if do there, we do this? Let me pose this. Okay. If there are, let's say, three to five of you guys that um, like, are into the idea of a collective bun Nick Hill Discord... You yeah. know something about Discord and are interested in some sort of role as right. like uh, uh, to help Bun and I facilitate this. Email yeah. the Bun or me because right. we want to do like a little bit of an introduction with a few of you guys. It bring you into the to the to the Discord server and help us get it on its feet so we can launch it. And this can be the first thing we do as a group um planning this video and doing this social experiment you right. know so again um, if there's like three to five of you if we get more we'll, bun and i will have a conversation that are into discord interested in helping bun and i email bun or me and we'll coordinate stupid. bless you some Thank sort you. of thing discord stupid here quick background uh discord is basically a forum it's a forum it's a very yeah. fancy forum that's a yeah. very stripped down way of describing it yeah so uh and for those of you who are not on helix i uh, see some uh discouragement there um let's have a conversation to figure out how we make it an equal playing field that way it doesn't really matter if it's helix honestly i don't care uh maybe we can make it a thing where it it's uh system agnostic yes you know oh uh, i i don't know if i said this out loud i was thinking it you um if we decide helix is something we can all do helix native has a 30-day trial i think it or does something like that yeah i used mine up uh i was gonna buy it and then Wait, you got a stomp though so that's no i okay. have a stomp but i still want the actual desktop version uh but I, it was impossible for me to buy it. I had the money. I was ready. And the the system didn't allow me to do it. Mm. I'm not joking. Well, it's like... It's a sign. Yeah. Tim, Stay. we don't know if it's going to be all line six. We were just kind of throwing it out there. We'll, we will... Yeah, may, maybe <clears throat> it, it's system agnostic. Yeah, maybe it's you know? a different plugin. Maybe it's something... The point is not... The gear, the point is the content of the video. Yeah. All of us having the same bullet points to hit. It, and, yeah. So and, we all write the script together. Yeah. In the same Google document. Everybody is in that document. And everybody has the exact same starting point. Yeah. And the, and, and, and the end goal is to see... And I don't even know how we would gauge this. Um, but to see what, how the individual looks at, uh, the problem that we are attempting to solve. Yeah. I mean, we can even look at it this way. We can bring it to one of these, uh, live streams. We can watch them all back to back and there's going to be people that didn't participate that can then say like, you know, what personality they liked brought what to this particular topic, you know? Yeah. So it's it's maybe, it's a social topic, it's a social experiment for sure. Yeah, and maybe the topic is, uh, you know, sorting out uh, the extreme trouble and extreme base of plugin or or of digital amp signals, because that's something that is universal across yeah. across all of the. Uh, doesn't matter if it's Helix or anything. Like, uh, maybe Axe Effects is a little bit more tame that way, but mm -hmm. still, it's there. It's present. 
the extreme treble and the extreme bottom end of like the bass extension and treble extension of digital modeling technology is a challenge and is the thing that usually turns a lot of people off. And maybe the topic of this uh, experiment is solving that. And, but maybe we figure it all out together. And yeah. just to kind of experiment on this point of the individual's point of view is always valuable, even if it's like simple and on the individual level. So let's say I've never done this before. My thinking would be, I already know this about myself. My thinking would be is like, I'm not very smart and I don't know anything and I have yeah. nothing to contribute to this. Yeah. Uh, I've gotten a little wiser as I got older. Uh, I'm like, oh, I understand physics at a high level and all these sorts of things. I'm like, oh, that's not normal. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, so yeah, there's some definite legwork we got to do, but... So question, cool. before we sign off, we're about to sign off. It's, yes. Uh, in three minutes at Poo Ninja. Have a good night, brother. Poo Ninja. Be well. Uh, hopefully we'll have video sorted out. But, uh, oh, excuse me. Um, the goal is how do we figure this out? It's all going to be email or what? Um, I, again, I'd say let's get a few people to help us bring the discord up on its feet in the next few days. Um, okay. Three to five people to help us do that. Be moderators, if you will. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah. Moderators, then, admins. At, yeah. And then we can invite everybody to the discord. We can start a channel, social experiment, whatever. Um, you know, YouTube, f uh, psychology, shit like that. Start a channel and we'll start putting this together in the Discord, you know, to yeah. start to start that interaction on the Discord server. This is fun, dude. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, I'm so interested in, like, human psychology and all so of that. So am I. <laughs> yeah. You guys are going to, uh, if, you're, if you're not into the inner workings of the human mind and psychology and thinking, thinking about why or how other people are thinking, putting yourself in other people's shoes... That's me and Bun, so if you're not into that, you're going to be annoyed by a lot of shit. Yeah. But we are very <laughs> interested in the human condition, how the mind works. So we already got Anthony emailed about the Discord. Anthony! So, all right. That guy, that guy is the guy. So Amazing. Um, we'll, yeah. give you, we'll, get, we'll get you guys and Discord for those information. Of, yeah, and for those of you who are hesitant on a new platform like Discord, keep in mind that Nick and I are not uh, <laughs> Discord users. Discord, like Nick, uses it a little wee bit. A little bit. Tiny I use bit. it not at all. I have no idea what I'm doing. It's new for me. Uh, but so we're going to learn and grow together with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It just yeah. represents something that we can all kind of like do something together in a private space. Yes. It's just a, a way Bun and I thought about an, a way to bring his community, my community together. So, um, and and maybe Stevens' community, and yes, and Stevens too. Yeah, by all means, yes. Um, cool, that's good. Right. It's a good place to stop. I got to go pick it. my kid up soon anyway. So okay, I got to go to the bathroom. <laughs> Guys, thanks so much. <laughs> Thank you for the, your patience and hanging in there with us. We will get everything up and running by next week. Bun, thank you for being a trooper and trying to fight your way through this. I know it's frustrating. I know we're going to have many a discussion on how frustrating this was. <laughs> we'll, we will get this fixed. But, uh, yeah, email Bun or myself if you're interested in helping with the Discord. We have the, the skeleton set up. We are, again, noobs and are looking for some people who would be interested in helping us moderate, keep things running smoothly, you know? So thank you guys so much for hanging out. Good conversations. Thank you, everybody, for the super chats. Anthony and Tim, I believe. Thank you, guys. Uh, that is very, very appreciative. It's very sweet. You and guys are the best. 
Yeah, this is this and is. And I hope uh, I hope we can do some cool stuff all together. Absolutely. Yeah. That's what we want to do. So yeah. everyone have a good one, and we will see 